In preparation for the new Mentality podcast, I was fortunate to go around to my good mate Adam Cuthbertson's house to check out his weird, weird art collection. Check it out here. So just before we get started with the podcast and, and all the procedures, I've got my main Madam Cuthbertson here. Really started to take a liking to him lately. Um, you know, he's he's funny, he's charming, and, and he's also got a lot of he's got a lot of creativity to him. Not just on the field, but off the field also in his in, in his you know beautiful house. Adam, tell me about these pieces of these pieces of art you've created, mate. I suppose it just. Um just from st- stems from something that um, I suppose my family been into, um, and I suppose I grew up thinking, oh yuck! I hated out my parents' garden all the time, or paint and etc. And I've got a bit older, and suddenly it's become a passion. So um, it all stemmed from the yard. You know, I'm a bit, I love my landscaping and um, designing of the yard and whatnot. You've seen it all before. Um, but then, obviously, over here during the winter, it's uh, morphed into painting and uh, and doing a bit more creative stuff around the house. Um, in specific then you've got a ma- well it's I don't know how, how many square metres that one is but you've got your dog and what's that you know you've got you, you've got Bambi she's got one eye has she yeah tell me about Bambi and then tell me about the uh, the creative piece you've got down there it looks to me a bit like an owl it's like the never ending it's like a never ending painting these ones for me obviously the, the one with the woman in it to the left of the cat owl thing was um was done and sent over by my mum and I found a nice little frame from a hospice and and framed up in that but um the the dog sort of came from sitting around the house one day just looking at my sad sack of a face dog <laughs> and just thought right I'm putting you down on a painting because she's always she's so interesting to look at and that and yeah. still still got a bit of work but you know um it's getting there it's starting to look a bit more decent than where I initially started at the problem is my mind changes all the time so I change the the painting all the time. Yeah. The cat, uh, the kaka cat, that that comes from. Um, ka, I know kaka cup means um, oh, it's a bit ka-ka. rude in uh, rude in some languages, but to me it was just kaka like a bird. Yeah. But yeah. that stemmed from you, obviously. Vicious. Yeah, you always you always thought my cat looked like a bit of an owl. Yeah, I used to come round to Cuffbos. You know, when you're first getting to know someone, um, and Cuffbos obviously loves his 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 yard. He loves the the interior design of his house, and then he's also got this. This creature that runs around that looks to me more like an owl than a cat. Hence um, the, uh, caca cat. So that's why I guess Nala is is propped up on a on a bit of a branch there, Cuff. Yeah, just um, perched up, looking over us, just stalking us. Yeah. Um, um, moving on to my like my plants and that. There's more of a story behind my indoor plants because obviously you're limited to what you can do. So I like to have a bit of um, bit of life. Um, bit of um garden come inside so you got the first yeah. one there it's uh it's obviously just a cactus plant which i've gone out and and sourced a just a a bowl and then um i've brought the, the snails that are in it and all the rocks are in it are just pieces of the world i've brought back the snails themselves i ate all those snails in france washed them out and brought all the shells back nice created a bit of uh used them to create a bit of a um a talking point in the house and and the other ones are just just to show you how much money I've probably got left in my pocket after I buy all these things. <laughs> just and, loose uh, change, is it? Yeah, my life just burning away on at, like those matchsticks. And you've got, it seems like you've time travelled there. I, I know I met Boy George recently, but you yeah. seem to be stood with Freddie Mercury there, is it? In, in, <laughs> a, in a bit of an old-fashioned painting. I don't know when that was taken. I don't know if that was taken before I was born or... Yeah, no, no that, that, that does look like that. Uh, me and my good mate, we travelled down to Whitby one evening um, after feeling sorry for ourselves after a big night out last year. <laughs> Obviously during a buy, yeah. Um, we had a weekend off, and yeah. um, we were down at Whitby, and there was this shop there that did like um, when they dressed you up and got a got a old sort of fashion photo of you, I guess you could say. He's dressed like a Zulu um, warrior, and I think I'm a captain of a ship. Um, yeah. And the funny the thing about that painting, right? Yeah. He has he cannot grow a hair of um, he cannot grow a hair on his face. Like me to save it, yeah, a bit like yourself. Got Although def- I think I've got a default go at it, probably, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you're a little bit better than him. But so they've, what they've done is to make him look more legit. They um the the Zulu um I suppose chiefs and exactly and that back in the day had like I think the Zulu. I might have just made that up. Had um 
<laughs> had tashes because those time that period of time they all had um, moustaches. So yeah. they've taken mine and edited it and shoved it on his face to make nice. him look a bit more like you know part of the uh, part yeah. of the yeah. Then you've got then you've got a bit of a gladiator helmet there, and then you've got something that looks to me a bit like. Is it Game of Thrones? I don't know. What what mm. is it? It looks uh, <laughs> very uh, well. It's, it's medieval. Very medieval, yeah. Mm. Very royal. What you've got going on here, isn't it? <coughs> Nothing's planned in my house, so I got I got some of the gladiator gear when I was travelling around Rome. I love that. I love that part of the world. Rome was just unreal, um, and obviously there's a lot of um, stuff that you can you can relate back to movies. Gladiator, mm. obviously, um, the helmet, sword. Um, the, the big sword in the corner is one that I picked up when I was over in, um, Scotland. That's obviously supposed to be a replica of, um, Sir William Wallace's sword. Obviously it's not as big as Sir William Wallace's sword, but it's, um, nevertheless, I, I liked it. I sword. brought it home. <laughs> Jonesy's had plenty of fun with it. I think a lot of the boys did on Mad Monday too. Yeah. Uh, the candle stand, I actually was just in a hospice one day and I, it was a blue, like, ranks sort of uh, rusty thing that was falling apart. So I picked it up. I think it was five quid. Brought it home, gave it a sand over, and then um, repainted it. Went out, bought some candles for it. And I thought, it'd, I thought it'd create a nice little setting for those nights. You want to sit at home and watch um, Game of Thrones and Vikings and such medieval um, TV shows and sort of create... The yeah, atmosphere. so you want an atmosphere yeah. along with the reality. Yeah, well, that's right, yeah. To slop on the sofa, you need a bit of something <laughs> going on around the telly, don't you? I'll tell you what, there's a lot of slopping on the sofa, that's there's for sure. There's a lot of slopping, yeah. That's what they thought. That, don't take that out of context. I mean, oh, like, sleeping. What? you got a bike there, Cuffboy. That doesn't look like a traditional Englishman's bike, does it? I remember Chico had one like that, didn't he? But nah, Chico's was a bit more of a racer, you know, and it didn't was last it? long in the country, to be fair. Why? Because um, he's gone? <laughs> Well, it's still in the country, I suppose. I just don't think he uses it in the country mm. anymore. Um, I picked this up when um, about halfway through last year during summer. Obviously, it's um, I live in a lovely area. There's a lot of coffee shops mm. and stuff close by, and um, I like I don't like being in the car all the time. I like getting out and foot or riding the bike or so. I just picked. I got a skateboard, but yeah. obviously, you know, with our job, you can't skateboard everywhere. Off pill as well. Yeah, You've yeah, got yeah. a big hill. Yeah, it's you? a bit of a hill. Yeah, yeah. So it looks like a bike, a Londoner would get, isn't it? And for, to do a bit hey, of... Um, no, th this is a coastal thing, you know. Is it? Yeah, it's called, a, it's called a beach cruiser. So back home, I had one. Oh. And I used to... I used to When I lived in Cronulla area, um, I used to have one. I used to just get to training every morning on it. It was just a just a nice way to just to cruise down the beach, go to the coffee shop, etc. So sort of sort of like everything around my house or, um, or in the yard, I tried to create it. So had that like summery vibe about it. Um, I so, guess yeah. you say that's a bit of an ornament as well because you don't really use it, do you? <laughs> <laughs> not not until summer, you know. Yeah. Um, I did use it quite a bit in summer. I was I was getting down to the down the cafes and that a bit on it, but got a bit of Zen garden stuff just it, behind that it's as well. Obviously taking it like yeah yeah I got a bit of a bit of Buddha stuff just to you know just to look after you, you know, yeah you? just to keep the uh, the vibe keep the vibe nice and nice and relaxed around here always burning the incense etc just been learning some buddhist chants as well have you nam yo ho renge yo nam yeah do that every morning no I don't really was that serious no that's not serious no I, sort of I might do it every oh. serious I, don't know. I wish Would it I? was serious to be fair so right now we're going to crack on with a podcast the first ever mentality podcast and that can be found on itunes um, under mentality or if you want to find out more information on that go on to mentalitymagazine.com and you find everything on there and you can follow our conversation which will be enthralling I just started playing it as a junior. Um, my family's always been involved in rugby league and then at school I changed to rugby union with the school and then as soon as school finished went back to rugby league. I played a lot of sports uh, growing up and then they all became relatively boring but rugby league was always good fun so I continued playing that. Um, I played in the juniors, I played a bit of centre, a bit in the halves, a bit of lock and then ended up playing hooker. Mostly played quarterback until I moved into the front row. Uh, Football-wise for me was always Andrew Johns and Denny Badiris, just that combination at Newcastle, I love watching them play. Uh, probably I'd have to say my grandfather, he wasn't good at rugby league, he was just a big inspiration to me. 
Um, Pre-season. It's um, pretty solid. Lots of running, lots of uh, early mornings, late days. Yeah, I'd have to say, definitely say pre-season. It's always good fun um, seeing the boys in that, but getting up early and flogging ourselves every day isn't the funnest thing in the world.